As a child, I was often scared, confused, and angry. The things that scared me didn't really change, I just got braver. The things that confused me didn't become less confusing, I just started to understand that the world was a confusing place. The things that made me angry, I did not want to pacify. I did not want to hold on to anger, but I also didn't want to lose the sense of injustice that I saw. Eventually, my anger turned to disappointment, and that turned into depression. I started punishing myself because I couldn't change the things I didn't accept, and I didn't accept the things I couldn't change. I never bullied the bullies, but that didn't stop them. I questioned my place in this world and convinced myself I didn't belong. It was that deep sense of unbelonging that made me question why any one of us are here. Were we just a product of evolution, beating our predecessors and rivals as the most to win the right to exist? If so, if we were really the sole product of a race designed to weed out the weakest, then why did we kill more of our own than any other species? Why did we have the highest rates of suicide of any species? Why did genocide, war, homicide, poverty, homelessness, depression and corruption run so prevalent? Did we win the battle, but we're losing the war? Is this as far as mankind gets? These questions kept me up at night. I didn't know how to articulate my feelings or who to ask about these things, so I set off looking for answers of my own. What I found was an imbalance, a scale that tipped in the direction of greed, materialism and fear. Power, status and wealth were the utmost collective values, followed by appearances and entitlement. We had lost the connection to nature, to our hearts and in essence to spirit. Things that you could not hold or that did not shout loudly were unseen and unfelt. Compassion, empathy and kindness were acts, not embodiments. The quiet world shuddered as it felt the cold breeze of mankind. It was not an organic state to be in, and I started to understand the fear, anxiety and disease that I could feel everywhere I turned. There was work to be done, but we had an entire species claiming to have already won the race. We were not yet done in our evolution, but the next step had nothing to do with feats of physical strength, ability to hunt or reproduce. The next step was an inner one. One that required us to look at ourselves and our role on the chessboard. Not as a piece, but as a square on the board. The foundation in which all the moving pieces navigate on. Were we creating a space for kindness? Or were we holding on to anger like a child clings to their mother? Were we growing as people? Or were we stagnating because we had hit a roadblock in our path? Change is a constant, but it is not linear. We are folding into chaos, losing connection to the anchor, our reason for being, what drives us as a species beyond our basic needs. We all have an inner compass, an emotional guidance system, a joy radar if you will. It's what tells us that war is bad and peace is good. When we use this on a day-to-day -day basis and implement an intuitive morality, there is so much of life that just doesn't make sense. Depression, for instance, is caused by a lack of fulfillment and satisfaction, and yet abundance has become so materialistic that there are billionaires committing suicide. If material abundance was the answer, then all rich people would be content in living through means of compassion, and yet it is a well-known fact that wealth breeds corruption. Do you know what kindness breeds? Generosity. Compassion leads to love. Empathy leads to community. Like attracts like. Partly because of the spaces being held, but partly because of the inherent upward spiral that eventually leads to realizations and feelings beyond words altogether. The sense of knowing, of belonging, is not found externally. It is not even found in the internal. It is found in the eternal. The forever now. The presence of self and being existing only ever in this moment. You don't actually exist in the past, as when it was the past, it was the now. It just wasn't right now. One may call this the wrong now. 
It is not morally infringing in any way, of course. It is simply not right. That is to say, one should not reference the past, but it should happen with the same moral compass and guidance system that we have right now, not the guidance system we had then. Otherwise, we are facing the same battle, but without the upgraded armour we now have. Or rather, coming to realise we have a new perspective, and implementing that in our navigation of an old situation. These personal insights and journeys are not lost to the collective. They make up the collective. We all, every single one of us, play a role in forming the collective consciousness and making sure we live in a world we want to see. We are not so different. Our values to raise our children with compassion in a clean, safe world. To see them grow into their own people without discrimination, bullying and hatred. To install a sense of self-validation and self-love and our world will without question be a better place thank you